Welcome back to Book Busters. Today I, we'd like to talk about the extraordinary work The Wind-Up Girl by Paolo Baxigalupi. Let's get out of here. Ready for light speed? One, two, three! Paolo Baxigalupi, I love saying that word, took the book world by storm in 2010 with his debut novel, The Wind-Up Girl, uh, swept the Hugo Nebula prizes and added the Locus and Campbell Awards. Uh, strangely, his work was described initially known by biopunk. It's, it's uh, kind of a new genre because uh, it involves gene hacking and biological plants gone awry, uh, plagues and all sorts of other unknown deviations from the plan because uh, these companies don't really care about the consequences of, of, of hacking around in the genome and, uh, and there is no sort of long-term research to, to figure it out. They just mutant things land on your doorstep. So. I would like to add to these descriptions steampunk uh, because he has a he has a fantastical way of taking old ideas and old technology for example uh, watch springs and drunken uh, colonialists and launching them off into new vectors in the future um, in a very very novel sort of way in our green writing lightsaber category, Paolo writes very, res he writes a very respectable four out of five. His strengths are his descriptive style because he, he evokes imagery in a really readable way. His language is, is accessible. He never gets bogged down by any pretense or flowery, fluffy prose. Um, as a tiny drawback is at times he's a bit repetitive. Um, and then if you're totally unfamiliar with Thailand, he he uses a lot of Thai words in his descriptions, and it's great if you've been to Thailand. It really evokes you know the flavor, the exotic imagery uh, of the country, but it, it it's a little bit gimmicky, and he and he relies on it a little bit too much. But other than that, um, his his writing is fantastic because he really flushes out this this steamy jungle heat. Uh, in an exotic kingdom, um, and uh, he he captures it in a way. Like I said, I've been to Thailand a hundred times. Um, you you feel like you're there. So four out of five in the green lightsaber writing category. In our blue, the science and big idea lightsaber category, it's a bit of a mixed bag, mostly on the upside. Uh, he has a hugely amazingly thorough pillar of this world. Uh, the framework is a uh, it's a soupy hodgepodge of this global warming neo-corporate colonial shenanigans spiced with crazy plant plagues and horrible disease and all the uh, other insane uh, bad consequences of constantly meddling with the environment. Uh, and not really understanding the long-term consequences. Uh, you add sea level rise to this mix and the invention of what is more or less a new form of human being, which is, of course, the wind-up girl, uh, which it, to no one's surprise ends up being a really kind of strange sex doll thing. Um, this, this world he invents, is, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's really fully imagined. You can, you can see all the elements in the science already there in place. Now, a uh, slight drawback is, is he kind of leaves out a few, there's a few gaps in, in his science. Um, supposedly the world has no more car carbon fuels. There's no more oil at all. It's all gone. But he never really, <laughs> one thing that struck me, he never talks about, well, where did all the wind and the solar and the tidal power go. I mean, that 
that just disappeared. I mean, the world still has technology and science, but none of these other power sources exist. Uh, a minor drawback overall in the plan, because the other pictures he paints uh, are more or less complete. Uh, so I would have to say in the blue category, he definitely rates a 4.5, a very solid 4.5. So in our red lightsaber category uh, for storytelling, which should also be named Why Do the Sith Have All the Fun, uh, this book is off the charts. Mr. Bacci Galuppi, he really shines here. He, he does some really neato extrapolations of the current sort of Thai schizophrenic system of governance where you have a godlike king and in reality he has to balance it with the needs of the bureaucracy and the military. And this is uh, messy. It's very, very messy. And another really phenomenal element of the storytelling is the characters he blends in, the, the drunken corporate expat farang uh, is the Thai word for foreigner. Uh, it, it feels like Graham Greene in his classic, the, the Quiet American. They're just all hanging out in the bar waiting for the heat to dissipate and getting drunk some more. Um, his storytelling really, uh, it's rich. It's, it's, um, it's fantastic. The way he, the way he depicts the, uh, the destitute Chinese economic migrants from Malaysia and Indonesia and how they're, you know, just these, these people living on the, the fringes of Thai society in the future because, uh, they were essentially murdered and forced out of these other countries. Uh, and this scheming that goes on with these guys, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's, um, it's a book that you, you can't put down. Um, he really rates a five plus in the red lightsaber category for storytelling. For our final purple lightsaber category here at Book Buzzers, we will give Mr. Paolo Bazzigaluppi a solid 4.8. Nine. This book is a magnificent accomplishment, a very entertaining read. Uh, I'd also highly recommend uh, his next big book, The Water Knife. It's a very, uh, it's also pretty original work about our fractured future and scarce resources. I won't tell you which one. Um, I'd like to finish up with some bonus irrelevant trivia. Uh, I had to go to www.pronouncenames.com to really come up, uh, to not murder the name Bacigalupi. I <laughs> almost did it. Bacigalupi. Uh, not an easy last name. And, uh, lastly, you may all by now realize there's not a lot of science fiction books set in Thailand. This is one. Uh, I read this a long, long time ago, still had it on my shelf. Very, very, very odd book. Very, very strange man. Um, it's, it's not everyone's cup of tea. It's, it's thin, but it's really dense prose. Um, but it's set in Thailand, and it's sci-fi. <laughs> so there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed our show today. Signing off today, Michael Morelli and Peter John from Book Buzzers.